Hello, I'm Wei Jia Wang. I'm going to present the work entitled Efficient and Private Computations with Code-Based Tasking, joined with Pierrick Mou, Fitun Garcia, Frank Sava, the VIA standard. Here I list what I'm going to present. First, I will give the background and motivation of this work. Then, I will present the code-based masking, which is the main contribution of this work. At last, I will show a very nice property of code-based masking, which respects to the efficiency called cost optimization. Here, I am going to use one slide to give a short introduction to the side-channel attack. As we know, a cryptographic, cryptographic primitive has to be implemented and will run in a given environment which may have some side-channel leakage such as power consumption, running time, or fault information, and so on. For example, we can implement a cryptographic primitive on a chip here that take plain text as input and output some separate text. During the computation, an adversary may utilize the side-channel leakage to recover the circuit key inside the chip by using some statistical analysis. We usually call this type of attack as a channel attack. Masking is one of the most investigated countermeasures against a side channel attack, where each circuit, each circuit dependent sensitive variable is encoded, uh, is randomly encoded into several shares. Here, I, pre I present more details about the masking scheme. A masking scheme is made up of two ingredients. The first one is called encoder. And it encodes each circuit variable CX into a number of shares, such as energy shares are, indep are independent of X. So we can see that the encoder provides the security of the circuit variable, such as a key. Besides, the cryptographic primitive usually is a computation from input to output. So we need to uh, secure the computation, which requires the second ingredient, the private computation. Here I give an example. Say we have we want to compute x plus y times z, where x, y, z are circuit variables. What we can do is to transform each elemental operation into their mask correspondence whose input and output are both shares. Uh, here, addition is transformed to addition gadget and the multiplication is transformed to the multiplication gadget. After those transformations, we can transform an unprotected competition uh, to a protected one. Ensures that any uh, intermediates are independent of the input circuit we call this kind of secret, uh, we, call, uh, we call this kind of security as deep privacy or deep problem security. So, um, so in the private computation, there are various gadgets, and among them, the most uh, important one should be the multiplication gadget. So this is the basic idea of masking. We are interested in two kind, two types of masking. The first type is additive masking, or called fully masking, if it works in a field which carries characteristic two. The encoder of additive masking ensures that the sum of shares gives the circuit, like this. This type of encoder is quite simple, uh, which makes uh, the corresponding private computations quite efficient compared to other maskings. Another type of masking is called uh, code-based masking. Its encoder is more complicated than and covers the additive masking. Here, it encodes several circuit CK, uh, into shares together by using a linear code. And it is a generalization of, uh, generalization of many previous maskings, such as uh, inner product masking, UXR masking, polynomial masking, and so on. Uh, why we generalize the addictive masking to the code-based masking? It is because that there are several merits of the code-based masking. The first merit is about the security. Uh, it has better security mm, that can decrease the information leakage, 
uh, and uh, some previous work shows that it is um, it said uh, show that it has somewhat better security in the low noise condition. The second merit should be about the fault resistant. As we have shown above, the encode of the code base busking encodes several circuits together by using uh, a linear code. And the linear code can provide the fault detection property of the shares. So this is a second merit. The third merit should be about the versatility. It is a generalization. Uh, I mean, code based masking is a generalization of many other maskings. Uh, for example, Boolean masking, inner you know, product masking are special cases. And uh, the study on the code masking can be specific to any specific masking. Uh, despite the merit of code based masking, it has several challenges. The first challenge is about the generic private competition. Applicable to any code based masking, which now is still unknown to the best of our knowledge. For example, the marketing gadget for the DXR masking is still unknown. And uh, the second challenge is about the performance. And we know that the code based masking is more complicated, which makes it less efficient than the Boolean masking. So, how to reduce the implementation overhead is another challenge. In this work, we tackle uh, those two challenges by proposing two proposition uh, by proposing two contributions. First, uh, first we provide a modification gadget for any uh, code based masking with respect to any linear code. Secondly, we will show a very nice property of the code based masking called optimization, where we consider multiple modifications in parallel. The more modifications a cryptographic implementation has, um, and the better performance it will be. Uh, then we will present our code based masking scheme. As we mentioned before, the masking usually is made up of two uh, indie gradient the encoder and private computation. For the encoder, we propose the generic encoder. And for the private computation, uh, we propose the modification gadget, which is the most important component of the private computation. Before we provide the generic encoder, we study we start with uh, the encoder of the additive masking. For example, the circuit is a bit here, uh, CX, and assume that the number of shares to be three. The encoder. Uh, first generates uh, two bits, R1 and R2, uh, and then it computes X plus R1 plus R2, and set it as the first share. Then the second share should be R1, and the third share should be R2. If we rewrite this procedure by using a linear code, we have this finger. Uh, the left vector is a concatenation of X, R1, and R2. And which can be regarded as uh, the message of the linear code. And it is multiplied It is multiplied by a fixed matrix here, which is the generating matrix of linear code. And the result should be the code word here, which is a vector of shares. It, we have three vectors, actually. So the generic encoder can be regarded as the uh, generalization of the uh, above the uh, of the above encoding procedure. So where the circuit is a vector of finite uh, vector in finite field here, and so as the you know, randomness r, then the generic encoder calculates x times g, which is which is the matrix plus r times h, which is another matrix. Uh, it results a vector of n shares here. So here is a finger corresponding to the linear code. The left part is, is similar to the addictive masking. It's a concatenation of X and R of the I mean a concatenation of the of the circuit and uh, randomness. Then the red part is a generating matrix, which is a concatenation of H and G. And uh, after the modification, 
the result should be a code, a code word, which is a vector of n shares here. So uh, this is our generic uh, encoder. This type of encoder generalizes uh, the encoder of different maskings by specifying the matrix. Uh, for example, if we set the generation matrix A like this, we will get the encoder of Boolean masking. Then if we set the generated matrix A like this, we will get the encoder of the inner product masking. Then if the generating matrix A is like uh, sorry, it's like this, uh, we will get the direct sum masking, where the G is K times N um, rather than N times, rather than 1 times N. And, uh, and then if we further generalize the direct, the encoder of the direct sum masking, we will get uh, our generic encoder. The element can be the element in the finite field rather than only bit. And the generating matrix is no longer square, it can be a re-angle, which provides the nature of property of fault detection for the our generic encoder. So now we have the generic encoder. The other step is to provide a multiplication gadget in regard to the generic encoder. Similarly, let's start with the Boolean masking and we consider the ISW multiplication which is quite famous in the community of set channel countermeasures. So the input are two vector of shares here and here. Uh, first, it computes the output product of the input shares, resulting in an n times n matrix like this. Then we have to refresh this matrix for the sake of se uh, security. At last, uh, we sum the columns of the matrix and gives n shares as a result. So here I give a concrete example. Say the number of shares be three. So after the outer product, we have a matrix of three times three, and we perform the refresh. In the refresh, we generate the random variables and add them to the entries of the matrix. Here we add the R1 on this entry, and so as its symmetric entry to a diagonal. Then we add R2 to this entry and so as its sym uh, symmetric entry to a diagonal here. And also R3 to this entry and this entry. So we can see that the refraction is actually symmetric to a diagonal of the matrix. At last, we sum, we sum the element of every row to get the result. From this uh, procedure, we can see that the scheme uses the output product then refresh and decompress strategy. In the following, we will generalize this strategy uh, to the code base masking. We also note that the compression of the code base masking is, masking is quite simple. It just sum the element of every row, thanks to the simple encoder of the code base masking. So if we consider the um, code base masking, uh, the encoder is more complicated, which will make the compression become more complicated. Here, uh, based on the above intuition, we illustrate the multiplication gadget. First of all, the input are two vectors of shares, here and here. Then we perform the output product as a Boolean masking, resulting in a matrix of this one. Then we perform the refraction also as a Boolean masking. After that, the compression becomes different because that the generic, uh, generic encoder is more complicated. So in detail, first, uh, it uh, multiply each row of matrix S by a distinct matrix. So first row is multiplied by M1, second row is multiplied by M2, and so on. Here, it should be noted that the matrix M1 to M uh, N are fixed matrix and can be pre com and can be pre computed from the generating matrix A and due to the limit of time decided the existence of the 
Here I don't explain in deep about the matrix MS. Um, um, further details can be easily found in the paper. And then we get the matrix T here, uh, whose entries are zeros except for the first M columns. Then T is multiplied by the generic thing matrix A here, um, resulting in a matrix W. Then we have to perform the second refresh. Y yes, we have two refresh in our multiplication gadget, which is slightly different from the SW scheme. And then after the re refresh, we just sum all the rows of the matrix K to get the result. So overall, this multiplication gadget follows out product here, then refresh, then compress strategy. But the compression is more complicated than the Boolean masking because of the generic encoder. And the two refresh, the two refresh here and here, which randomly uh, matrices R1 and R2 provide the deep probing security of this scheme. And uh, actually, the security can be even stronger. It is actually the T, uh, DSNI, where the composition uh, of several gadgets is also the probing security. Next, uh, we would like to introduce another property of this mask, uh, this modification gadget, the sum of the matrix T here. Uh, the rows of the matrix T here actually gives the circuit result. Which means that at this stage, at this stage, the internal matrix uh, is the addictive masking of the result, and we can see that the rest part from here to here of the multiplication gadget is actually a transformation from the addictive shares uh, to the shares of code base masking. This property enables the efficient mask linear transformation um, that is integrated which are multiplication gadget. Um, also, it should be noted that at this stage of the computation above, uh, about the security, we may still have more addictive shares than D uh, because the number, of, the number of rows of T here uh, should be larger than D plus one. So the security order at this stage may be larger than D. At last, we would show the cost optimization of the code base masking. Let's consider the randomness usage of Boolean masking and the code base masking. For the ISW multiplication, uh, which code base masking is actually requires D times D plus one uh, divided by two random variables for only one multiplication, where D is a security order. And uh, for our multiplication which code base masking, it actually requires two times uh, n times m uh, random variables for k modifications. I mean, for multiple modifications, and uh, the two here is because of we have two um, refreshing step. So if we uh, set the edge as an MDS matrix, then the value of uh, then the number of random uh, random variables should be two times d times d plus k, where d is a security order and k is the number of modifications. Then when we consider, can consider the number of random variables per modification, the value now should be, for the ISW modification, it should be d times d plus one divided by two, because here for the Boolean masking, it, there is only one modification. But for our schemes, this number should be d times the two times d times d plus k, and more important, more importantly, divided by k. So if k is large enough, the code base masking may use less randomness than the Boolean masking. Here is a finger uh, showing the randomness cost of sixteen uh, modifications in parallel. The red curves here, here, and here uh, shows the randomness requirement for the application of code base masking which define the value of k's and the blue curve shows, shows the random uh, uh, requirement for the ISW modification for the which boolean masking and we can see that indeed 
uh, for single medications corresponding to the case of D equals 1. The code base masking is not as efficient as the uh, bully masking. But if we increase the number of medications, for example, if the number of medications is 16, which means that K equals 16, the, then the random requirement generally become less than the boolean masking. This observation is called uh, optimization because the cost or the cost is optimized by multiple operations. So finally, I would like to discuss on the future work of our scheme. First of all, we think we can further. Uh, we think uh, our scheme. Can the having the complexity of our medication can be further reduced. We give the first uh, feasible result in this work that is um, applic uh, applicable to any linear code, um, uh, which already have some def uh, decent performance because of the, uh, because of the optimization. But we believe our scheme can be further optimized by using some specific uh, linear code. Secondly, we think we think the possible uh, better fault resistance resistance is another promising future work. And in our work, the fault resistant property only holds with shares or code words. It is still an open problem to maintain this property during the computation, or more specifically during the modifications. Uh, finally, we think. Software and hardware implementation of our scheme is another promising future work. That is, thanks for the listening.